Good morning to our online viewers, and we are so excited to be connecting with you this morning. We believe this Sunday morning celebration service that God is going to do something mighty, and we trust that you are expectant for what the Lord is going to do. Amen, amen. Good morning to our online viewers, and welcome back to our Supernatural Fire live stream. You know, we trust that God tremendous work in people's lives today and uh, you can come and join us for our services which is taking place at 250 Palmview Drive, Shastri Park in Phoenix and our first service starts at 8 a.m. and our second service at 10 15 a.m. And this morning we want to encourage you to tag your family and friends whoever needs a touch from the Lord we believe that the Holy Spirit is going to manifest and miracles will take place wherever you're watching from and, uh, miracles take place in the anointing. Amen. Amen. Okay, we just want to share a testimony and we pray that this testimony will build, build people's faith that are watching us today. Uh, the, our testimony for to this morning reads, On Sunday, whilst watching Supernatural Fire online, I was not feeling well at all. I, w I fell asleep as it got close to the end of the service, just before the altar call, and I had a dream that I was sitting in my usual place at the back of the church. And in this dream, Apostle prayed for me, and I felt a strong fire, like heat, entering into my body. Even when I got up, my chest was still hot, but I was... But I was back to normal, not feeling sick at all. Thank you, Lord. And this is from Dylan. Wow, what a powerful testimony. What a powerful testimony. God is so good. And we believe this morning, God is touching you. God is healing. And God is delivering. And we look forward to hearing from you. And you can send your testimonies to our WhatsApp line, which is 71 488 You can also share your testimony this morning on the comments below. You know, God is doing mighty miracles even through our online platforms. And uh, be sure to subscribe to our channel, our YouTube channel, as well as follow us on Facebook to get notified and when we go live and receive updates about our services and upcoming events. This morning, we want to encourage you to get a copy of our Supernatural Encounter devotional. We have received many testimonies of what God has been doing through this book because this is the Word of God. It comes with scripture reference. And we believe this morning that even as you get your copy, which is a available on Take A Lot, Amazon, as well as our church reception, God is going to do, do something amazing in your life. Amen. Okay, guys, thank you for connecting with us today, and stay tuned as we cross over to our service. Goodbye, and God bless you. Goodbye, and God bless.
Hallelujah. Good morning, church. I greet you in the wonderful and powerful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Are you excited to be in the house of God today? Amen. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice. We will be glad in it. We need to be excited because you have come into the house of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So today, I hope you've come with an expectant heart. I hope that you come with an attitude of worship. I hope that today you are going to leave all your cares and burdens at the feet of Jesus as you get excited to worship Him, as you get excited to praise His holy name. This is a celebration service where we come to meet with the Most High God. So I want you to be excited today. I want you to, let's, even before I start reading the Word of God, I want you today to just stay focused. I want you to just keep your mind focused on the Word. As you, as you meditate on this Word, as I read this word out to you, I want you to stay focused and meditate on it so that if there's any strongholds, if anything that has come into this house of God with you, with a mindset problem, it's going to break today. So your worship today, as we're going to give glory to the Lord today, your worship is going to be free, your worship is going to be powerful, and you're going to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. So let's stay focused. Now as I read the word of God, and my reading is from Psalm 91. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the foulest snare and from the deadly pestilence. He'll cover you with His feathers and under, and under His wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you say, the Lord is my refuge, and you make the Most High your dwelling, no harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread upon the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him. For he acknowledges my name. He will call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Bless the Lord for his holy word. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to come into the sanctuary, Lord. Father, to worship your holy and wonderful and glorious name Lord Father the name that is above every other name the name that brings deliverance the name that brings healing the name that has the power to make Satan bow the name that has the power to cause demons to flee the name that has power to set your people free there's liberty there's freedom there's everything that is good in the name of Jesus Father we thank you Lord that you will not fail us you have never failed us and you never will fail us so we pray Lord for your glory to come into the sanctuary and touch every single person that is standing here with an expectant heart we pray Lord that you will anoint us from head to toe with your glory with your power with your presence and we pray Father God that your blood covering is upon our minds Lord Father that all our cares and burdens Lord are at your feet that we will be good ground for breakthrough Lord we pray Lord that you will anoint our team Lord Father as we worship Lord, we pray, Lord, that the glory of God will come down, Lord, as we sing praises unto your name. We commit the service into your hands, and we pray, Lord, that, Lord, as we prepare our hearts, Lord, through praise and worship, that the word of God is going to find us to be good ground, Father, to transform us, to change us, to mold us, and shape us, and make us the people that you have created to be in Jesus' name. Now we ask, Lord, bless the service. Let the angels of God worship with us today. In Jesus' name I pray. We give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. We've come
come to lift up the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. If you love Jesus, say hallelujah. hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord. Jesus. Come on, put your hands together. Fall when fear is calm, still you call in me. When faith is lost, my hope exhausted, you will be my strength. When my mind says I'm not good enough, God, you're enough for me.
Jesus. You are holy God. As we worship you this morning, Lord. Your holy Father. Just begin to drink. Begin to drink this morning. As you worship him. As you exalt him. As you magnify him. Just begin to drink. all over this place speak the language of the spirit right now send some words into the presence of the Lord this morning send some words into the presence of the Lord Father we worship you we exalt you Ira baba bandara baka sete robo mondo robo go sadara baka ta Ira baba bandara baka sete de bigo to bobo shendara ba Ira baba baka sadara baka sete de bebe bebe de bebe Ira baba bandara baka sete de bebe bebe shete Ira baba 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 sete de beke te de be shende Lord we praise you we worship you Lord Just release that fire, release that glory, release the power of the Holy Ghost in this place, oh God. We are the sons and daughters of the Most High God. Father, let the glory that was in the Father, Son, and the, and the glory in the Holy Spirit be upon your sons today. Be upon your sons today. Let there be a supernatural shift because of the glory. Father, you said I will glorify my name in and through your, your sons, oh God. And this morning, Father, pour the glory. As you are holy, Lord. You are holy, God. You are mighty. You are majestic, Lord. You are awesome in this place, oh God. And we worship you and we adore you and we love you, God. And we worship you, Lord. And we know, God, that you are holy, Father. You are mighty. You are majestic. And Lord, spectacular are your deeds. Splendid are your deeds in this house, oh God. Yes, Lord. service with your blood today whatever you are planning for this house oh God let it be established in the name of Jesus let it be established in the name of Jesus in our worship we establish it Lord we establish your perfect will we establish your divine will over this congregation not the will of man 
not the plans of men, the plans of the Father. Whatever you want to establish here, Lord, that your name be glorified. Establish your will, Father, this morning. That have come believing you, trusting you, God. But today, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I seal you with this blood. I seal you with the blood. And declare no weapon formed against you or your family shall prosper. No weapon. Whatever the enemy strategized against you, today I'm telling you, we cancel it in the spirit. We destroy it in the spirit. We pull down every stronghold, every lie of the enemy. We pull it down. Whatever the enemy strategized against you today, we break and thwart the plans of the enemy in the mighty name of Jesus. Satan, take your hands off God's people. We bind any plan of judgment or false accusation in the name of Jesus over your people today. And we seal them with the anointing and the blood in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. You may be seated. I greet you all in the mighty name of Jesus. Is there anyone here visiting with us for the first time? Uh, nobody here for the first time. Your first time, amen. Hallelujah. Welcome to the house of God. Amen. We're going to just pray over the offering. Anyone else? Just one person. Let's just pray. Father, we thank you for your word says that he who gives and he who sows seed, it shall be multiplied. And so God, we just believe in your word. We believe in tithes and offerings. And Lord, when we tithe, you said you'll rebuke the devourer. You'll open up the windows of heaven. And so today, Lord, we pray for the local church and all those watching online all over the world that support this ministry. We pray the blood upon them, Lord. We pray the blood upon the finances upon this entire church. And we pray, Lord, that wherever they are sowing from this morning, I pray blessing of the Lord. I cover the finances of the people all over the world and even Father, online and in this church with the precious blood of Jesus. Lord, we will be able to fulfill your mandate in the name of Jesus. And all God's people said, Amen. Greetings in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm Andrea and here are the announcements for the week. Our Chapter Prayer Center takes place every Wednesday at 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Monford Shopping Center in Chatsburg. Our Church Intercession takes place every Wednesday from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. right here at BWC 250 Palmview Drive. Join us every Friday for our youth meeting at 7 p.m. If you have a testimony and would like to share what God has done in your life, you can leave your details at reception. All those in Moy River, you can join our Sunday services at 9 a.m. at the A.I. Kaji Primary School, 37 Market Street, Moy River. Our Sunday celebration services at 8 a.m. and 10.15 a.m. Sunday school runs during both our 8 a.m. and 10.15 a.m. services. On Mondays, you can listen to Apostle Trevor Subramani's teachings on Highway Radio at 12 p.m. Join us for our Tuesday Healing and Deliverance services at 7 p.m. If you have missed any of our services, you can catch Apostle Trevor Subramani on Faith TV, Channel 341 DSTV every Saturday at 5 p.m. That's all for me. Goodbye and God bless. Amen. When the offering takes long, it's, it's a good sign. How many of you know that? I don't know whether the notice is short or the offering is taking long. One of the two is happening. But we praise the Lord and uh, we trust God for what he's doing in the house of God. Amen. Uh, we're going to just now get into the sermon as the offering is taken up. We're believing God for something supernatural in your life. And even if you have come into the house of God, let the blood of Jesus wash you and cleanse you and deliver you and set you free. Amen. There are people that are joining us from all over the world. And we know that now for a fact. And so we pray even over those people that are members of this church in other parts of the world. In Johannesburg, especially a lot of people in Johannesburg are with us. And we get many messages. We just pray over them as well. We forget our online views, but we have a very large online audience even bigger than the church amen that follows us outside of this church and uh, we pray for every one of them 
and whatever God wants to do. Amen. That's where our, the Lord is leading and what the Lord is doing is touching the people in places. A lady sent me a message. Six years ago, she was healed of cancer and she's cancer free. I got that on my WhatsApp. Back. I don't even know the lady. I never even knew she got healed. But what a wonderful testimony. There are people's lives that we are touching. We don't even know. But all glory to God. One day when we go to heaven, we'll know them. Amen. Let's pray over the offering. Father, we bless your offering today. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, I pray, Lord, increase and overflow in the lives of your people and in your kingdom in the mighty name of Jesus. And all God's people said, Amen. I told you recently, the Lord has been giving me a little bit of sermons that are really opening the hearts of the believers. And we, we know that we started off with not everyone who, who, who says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom. And uh, you must understand that you will see how the grace teachings uh, that say, we don't need to live right for God. We just have to say we are under grace, live anyhow and go to heaven. They're going to be shocked. They will be surprised. I mark my words, they're going to be surprised. The blood watches us, but the Lord wants us to live a committed life to his word. Amen. Imagine this morning we're singing holy, holy, holy. That means we've got to really, really, really be an example of our God. Amen. So we, 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 that's why the greatest move will come to the churches that preach the truth. Because one thing about the truth, the truth can't fail. And the truth can't, uh, can't return void. And the truth will always win. How many of you know what I'm saying? The truth will always win. So you will always be successful in the truth. If it's the truth, nothing can shake it. Amen. So when you know that you're believing the truth, uh, you're going to really rise in the spirit. Amen. And uh, we got to know what the Lord is saying. That is most important to us in this time. And I spoke to you about various things about the kingdom and uh, that Jesus Christ uh, wants us to build accurately. You know, when he spoke about building accurately in uh, Matthew 7, 24, we spoke about uh, the house that obeys him and is sensible and building on the rock. Amen. And we sang that song today. Uh, it's founded on the rock. So we, we emphasized on obedience and uh, how important it is for a strong, strong foundation. We also emphasize uh, on how uh, that uh, on the consequences of ignoring Jesus' words. You know, we can, uh, the winds will blow and the house will fall. We, we must understand the dangers of ignoring what the Lord has spoken. Do you think Christ came on the earth and taught for so many years and people didn't take his word? They didn't want his word. So the instructions and uh, it shows how your instability and collapse will happen when trials come and winds blow uh, because of our non-existent relationship with the Father and that if, if we don't follow what Jesus is saying, it can lead to spiritual ruin. And we spoke about self-examination, that we must examine ourselves and uh, we understand that it is crucial for our spiritual growth and strengthening our relationship with Jesus. And we understood that it's not just uh, lip service, but building our words, uh, building our lives upon his word. Amen. And so today I want to read another portion of scripture that God is, these are end time messages. Luke 13, 22 says, and Jesus journeyed on through the towns and villages, teaching and making his way towards Jerusalem. Now, Jesus was making his way through Jerusalem and he was teaching in towns and villages. You know, this sets a scene of the mission of Jesus is that he was spreading the message of salvation and the importance of following his teachings. Think about it. Why was he in villages? Why was he in, in every part of Jerusalem? Why was he moving? Because he was teaching. You know what is, is the most important thing of, of the church is the church received the teaching of Jesus. See, when he said a wise man is building upon the rock, what he was saying is the wise people are building upon the teachings of the word. That means I'm taking in the word and I'm allowing the word to shape my life and the word is what is governing my life so when we understand that jesus is not just journeying through the through through the places religious teaching but he was wanting them to establish a foundation you know the secret of a church is the foundation which is the word we i'm telling you when you get this word everything in your life will change you see this this this, this that i show you every sunday is not my word it's written in the bible it's not my teachings, it's Jesus' teachings. So I'm just highlighting, that's how good it is for, 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 for the church because we don't have to teach and preach a different gospel. We just need to teach and preach what Jesus is saying. We don't need to complicate anything. Because even if you pick your Bible up, you'll read that Jesus was, what, what his mission was that I want to teach the people. 
I want the people to learn this thing because why? I want you to catch the revelation of the word. So, and someone asked him the question, which normally everyone can ask him. Lord, will only a few be saved, rescued, delivered from the penalties of the last judgment and made partakers of salvation by Christ? How many of you ask that question? Lord, will only a few be saved? And then the Lord goes on to tell them, he says, listen, save to enter by the narrow door. Force yourself through it. For many, I tell you, will try to enter and will not be able. You see, church, you have to understand the word. If we don't go through the narrow door, we are in trouble. So that narrow door, it is hard to go through the narrow door. It's easy to take the broad road, just live anyhow, live in the world. But the Lord is saying, strive to enter the narrow door. You see, this individual who asked the question, is saying, Jesus, how many people will be saved? The question introduces the theme of salvation. And the criteria for achieving it is hinting that there are stringent requirements for entrance in the kingdom, which is in the word of God. Many of us love to, to just say, Lord, I'm getting this, I'm getting that. But what about the requirements of the word? Are we obeying the word? Many people can never obey the word. You know, I, I can tell you this for sure. I can preach a thousand sermons. Many people will never want to un obey the word because we like to live how we're living right now and we don't want to really do what the Lord wants. So what we do? We change the word to suit ourselves. We make the word become what we think it should be. So we have our own private interpretations. I'll tell you something. Private interpretations will never take you through the narrow door. You see, it's going to be hard, but it's going to be something that we have to understand, that we have to strive. It suggests we must be active, persistent in our efforts of obedience to the commandments and the will of God. You know what? We're not under the law, but we have to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. We have to understand that, that we have to be discipled. That means I want to be a disciple. You know what is a disciple? A disciple is a true follower of Jesus. There are many people that cannot follow Jesus. You can't follow Jesus. When the Lord says, submit, or whatever the case is in the Bible, people cannot follow Jesus, but we like to believe we follow Jesus. But when you, when you tell people or give them instruction, they don't want to take the instruction. Listen, there are many rebellious people within the kingdom of God, not in the world. That's why he's talking about something here. He's saying, those people that have received salvation, you can't have to maintain your salvation. You know what I'm trying to say? That you have to keep yourself through your, your, your real, your efforts in serving the Lord. Because it's easy to walk away from God, to neglect God, to leave the word of God. But you have to maintain. That's why God will shape people in the process. And if you're not willing to be shaped, unfortunately, their doors will be open. You see, when the master comes, watch this, in 25, when the, once the master comes, master of the house gets up and closes the door, you will begin to stand outside and knock at the door again and again, saying, Lord, open to us. He will answer you, I do not know where or what household, certainly not mine, you come from. Imagine, the text says the word is Lord. That means they knew him as Lord. The other day I showed you, the text says, Lord. They knew him as Lord. But they were knowing him as Lord, but no relationship. You know, it's one thing, you can know somebody's name, but you have no relationship with them. You can know somebody's uh, house or whatever the case may be, but you have no relationship with God. You see, this is a disadvantage. If you only come to this church, and that's it, and go home, and you don't know the Lord of this church, that's a problem. You wasted your time for coming to this church. Why? Because it's not just coming to this church. We don't need to impress everybody. And you have to assemble together. The Lord says we have to assemble together as saints and all of that. We have to do that. But it's not just coming to church. It's what you do after you leave the church. Your relationship with the Father. Because why? God is interested in a strong relationship with his children. And that's why he says, listen, when the master of God gets up and closes the door, People will stand outside and say, Lord, open to us. Why? They knew him from a distance. They knew about him, but they never know the Lord himself and be in relationship. You see, once the door of opportunity of salvation is closed, there will be no further appeals. 
I pray that thousands of people that have the chance right now to call upon the name of the Lord will call upon the name of the Lord while the door is still open and that we will do what the Lord wants us to do. And we even as believers will get this message out there. Why was he in villages teaching? Because he was interested in evangelism. He was interested in soul winning. Not everybody only congregating on a Sunday here, but are you effective in your communities? Are you effective in talking to people about Jesus? In fact, to be honest, people, let me say this. The reason why so many churches cannot grow exponentially is because the people that attend the churches are talking only political issues and negativity. They are destroying what Jesus has built up. You know, when you destroy what Jesus built up, your life can be destroyed. Because you're supposed to be reaching out to the souls. But what are we doing? We are negative. Because why? When you can't submit to what Jesus is saying, what Jesus wants to do, sometimes people want to leave. The pastor wants to put you through the narrow door. You don't want it. You want it your way. It's a very challenging thing. Because why? People are supposed to be builders of the kingdom, builders of the church, builders of other people. Get your mind into a frame where I'm building the house of God. You see, you can't tear down God's house and expect your house to be built. You've got to build God's house first. Then you can build your house. Because when you put God's house last, what are you saying? So many people. You know, I just take this too as well. How many of us, when we get paid, we say, Lord, here's your 10%. We believe in tithing, so that's how we, we have to understand. How many of us really do that? No, we cannot do that nowadays. I've got too many bills. You see why? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then things will be added. We don't want that, but we want financial freedom. I want debt cancellation. You know, we're not thinking. You know, we keep saying there, how are you building? No wisdom, no revelation. When you're building the right way, that's the only way you can make it in this world. Why? Because it's only God's way or no other way. I can't do it my way. I can't do it how I feel. This is governed in the word. And what the word says is anybody go against the word, they'll be destroyed. You know why people have destroyed themselves? You have no revelation of the word. That means the word's supposed to work for you, but you work against the word. So what do you expect the word to do? The word can't work for you. That's why it says, that, uh, if you, you read your Bible properly, I, I don't I can go through the grace series, what, what the Lord is saying about grace and how people are just thinking, without commitment to Jesus, we are not building on the rock. You know what, church? Don't be sad. Say amen. amen. This sermon is preparing you for heaven. You know, I can't only prepare you for the earth, tell you you're going to get a car and a house, and you start screaming, hallelujah, amen. And I like you to have cars and houses. But what about when you leave this earth? You must be able to say, Lamel, I'm ready for heaven. I'm ready to meet with my master. You see, I'm ready to go to the Lord. We must be prepared to go to the Lord. We must be, we must be ready. So what is he saying? He's saying, listen, we have to trust his word. And then he says in Luke 13, 26, what's this? Then you will begin to say, which is normal. Believe it, talking to the bit. We ate and drank in your presence and you taught in our streets. That means these people who said, Lord, Lord, and the door was closed, it was not far from the Lord. We ate in, and drank in your presence. So don't be, you see, don't be impressed by everybody eating and drinking in the presence of God, only communion. He said, let a man examine himself. You see, the church, it needs to still come back to the Lord because we say, I gave my heart to you, Lord. But my heart is not given to you. Look at our actions. If you, if you, if you, I always say this, if you love somebody and you say, I gave my heart to you, then how do you, how do you behave if you really gave your heart to them? You didn't give your heart to Jesus. If he says, I was, I was in your presence. He said, the door is closed, but he said, Lord, open the door. Why? I ate in your presence, Lord. It doesn't qualify you. I drank in your presence, Lord. You taught in our seats. I was under your teachings. But Lord, why is the door closed? No relationship. Are you under the teachings of the ministry? Under the teachings of Jesus? But you have no relationship? It's time to self-examine. He said, let a man examine himself before coming to the table of the Lord. These sermons are for you to move to another level. I have to examine myself. Don't examine anybody else. People are so professional, they examine everybody else beside themselves. How many of you know what I'm saying? That's the problem. I can't say it anymore. You examine the pastor, the pastor lives his best life now. 
you examine the elders, the deacons, the council, or maybe somebody else. Some people are only examiners. I don't know who died to make you an examiner, that you cross-examine everything. Jesus died for you. But what am I saying? You are cross-examining everybody. Listen, don't cross-examine Tom, Dick, and Harry. Concern yourself with your relationship with the Father. Because why? I want a relationship with you. Why do I come to church? I want a relationship with Jesus. Why do I come to church? Yes, I, want, I, was, I drank in your presence, but the door is open for me. The door is not closed for me. I, I ate in your presence, but the door is open. You know something? To keep the door open, it is your responsibility. Think about it. It's not going to be the church's responsibility. Listen, you will say, I drank in your presence. You're going to say, I ate in your presence. I drank in your presence. And Lord, you, I was under your teachings. So, but he will say this in verse 27. He said, listen, I tell you, I do not know where, or what household, certainly not mine. If you read what God is really trying to say, you will come from, depart from me, you know, all your wrongdoers. If you read what God is really trying to say here, yeah, is there are seven churches in Revelation. These seven churches got defects and one church is okay. And then he begins to identify the defects of the seven churches. Obviously, we're going to go through that at some stage. Why? Because we have to know what are the defects of the seven churches to become the church that is prepared to go to the Lord. You have, there were defects. So he said, listen, don't go and be part of anything that does not represent the Lord and what the Lord is telling you because people just think that it is okay. I can go to any church, take any doctrine, whatever. And Jesus is saying, what household? Certainly not mine. There are churches that are planted by Jesus Christ and you know Jesus is in the house. There are certain religious structures. Why do you think all the churches in London, the gospel came from London to South Africa. When I went to, as I say always, to Smith Wigglesworth Street where he used to pray, a great revival came. The church is sold. It's empty. Do you know why? The people did not keep the fire of Smith Wigglesworth on the altar. God's fire, but the fire that Smith Wigglesworth brought to that nation was not kept on the altar. What did they do? They changed their thinking. To kill a congregation or to kill a church is easy. Change their thinking to believe what the world wants them to believe. We are under grace, so we don't need to do anything for anything. We can live in sin break every rule in the Bible, do what we want to do, and still we will be going to heaven. And Jesus says, I never knew you. Based on what, what you're teaching, what are you receiving? What word are you taking from the Lord? And so this is what he says. He says, man, wrongdoers in the kingdom. I know these are hard sermons, but listen, somebody got to preach it somewhere in the world. He says, listen, there will be weeping and grinding of teeth. When you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, but you yourselves being cast forth, banished, driven away. You know, the church have to preach about heaven and hell. Unfortunately, that's how, you know, many of you, when you got saved in the early days, there were many heaven and hell preachers. You know, nowadays, no more heaven and hell. Everybody, McDonald, this way, that way, this way. This Donald, that Donald, every Donald, whatever you want. This is how it is. And this is not what the Lord wants for the church. Eating and making merry within the kingdom. This is not the plan of the kingdom. The kingdom is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That means we have to be in right standing with God. We cannot be celebrating. And saying this, we're celebrating with Jesus, but we cannot be celebrating with the world. And making our social events the main thing. Are you there, church? You know what is the main thing? Celebrating with Jesus. I know this is a very hard sermon. And some of you are looking at me shocked. But listen, when you see, me, when you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in heaven, and the prophets in the kingdom, and you are there, you'll say, thank you, pastor. You know why? Because I'm not going to come to heaven and see myself or the people of God in this church, anybody in hell, I'm going to see us all before the throne of God, raising our hands and singing, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. This is what I want your children to know. Is that, man, you can love people. If you really love people, you're going to tell them about hell. 
If you really love people, you're not only going to tell them about the good things, you're going to really tell them that, listen, we have to align to the word of God. We have to align to the teachings because some of you can love your children and love your grandchildren and love everything, but true love is when you tell the truth. Because why? You want to see them with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and the prophets in the kingdom of God. You yourselves don't want to be banished and driven away. Why? My relationship with Jesus Christ. You see, and the people will come from the east, west, and from the north and the south and sit down and feast at the table in the kingdom of God. So what Jesus is saying, there's a, there's a table prepared for us in the presence of the Lord. He says the people are coming from the east, west, north and south. Do you remember when, 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 when the prophet was in the house, he said, listen, raise your hands to the north, south, east and west and call the people. You see, when you're doing this, you know what you are doing? You are doing only what Jesus is saying. It is normal for people to come from the north, south, east and west where Jesus is. Because that's why people are coming from the whole world to this church and flying on planes and coming to the to, to this place. You know why? Because Jesus is, is his mandate to call people from the east, from the west, from the north and the south to sit down at the table of the Lord. This is normal. That's why the church must be involved in evangelism. That's why the church must be involved in outreach work. It is coming soon. I'm preparing you for us to populate heaven and empty hell. We are preparing for the next dimension. So when you understand this, you understand that we have to sit down and feast in the kingdom of God. We are going to sit down and feast. Church, how many of you are excited where we're going to sit down at the table of the Lord one day? I'm telling you, church, don't worry. You know, as you get older, you realize one thing, my brother, we are getting ready to sit at the table of the Lord, not here, but there. How many of you are excited? I mean, we don't want to go now. Jesus, not now. But listen, give us a few more years. But, we, but we, we, that's our destination, amen? Let us enjoy more of the, the glory here. And, uh, but the day is coming. But when the day comes, I want to sit down and feast at the table of the Lord. That's why my entire mindset is geared towards how I'm going to walk with Jesus. How I'm going to talk with him. And whatever Jesus is going to do, even in my life, that now I am getting serious. How many of you know when you get older, you get more serious? I'm telling you, ask Rachel and Nanda, they'll tell you that. Even uh, Pastor Vincent and Jamie too, they'll tell you that. Oh, Bob is 74. If Bob is too serious. <laughs> because when you reach that age, you realize something. And even when you get to say, why do it when we get to our 50s and 60s and 70s? Let's do it when we are in our 20s. What a life you're going to live when you get serious about Jesus and his teachings. What a life you're going to live when you allow Jesus to shape your mind from the age of 20. You know, the things that we know now, some of you will say, I wish I knew it when I was in 19. Because why? There was such a glory in, 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 our, in, in what God is doing in our lives that I wish it was earlier. Why? I would have made different decisions. So we have to understand that there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth in hell. You see, this is what is an emotional reaction in hell. We rather... Weep for Jesus here and never weep in hell. Why? Because we must understand that disobedience has its consequences. And this is what the church don't want to preach anymore. Disobedience has its consequences. If I'm not obedient to God, unfortunately, you see, listen to this. It says, and there will some, in Luke 30, it says, and behold, there will some now last, some, sorry, and behold, there are some now last will be first, then there are some now who are first will be last. My God. It warns of complacency and in the kingdom of God that we have to persist in the things of God, the importance of serving the Lord. You know, why do you think he says there are some now who are going to be last? Do you know why? Some people have taken themselves out and put themselves at the end of the road. When you abandon your post of what God gave you to do, you're in trouble. How many of you know what I'm saying? Don't abandon your post. You know why you are here serving? 
You are not serving for the pastor, you are serving for the master. Do you know why you are serving? Not because of me. Listen, today I can have this job, tomorrow I can have another job. But you still have to serve for who? For him. Are you still there? If you don't know why you're serving, and see, when you decide to make wrong decisions, you are going to put yourself last. You don't know it, but you go back to the back of the row. Many of us, the last are going to be first. And the first are going to be last because when God gave it to you, what did we do with it? We as a church, we took it for granted. Are you there, church? We, many of us, take things for granted. Look at Saul. When God gave it to Saul, he took it for granted. What happened to Saul? He got demoted and a David overtook him. Why? Because wisdom says, I cannot let God down. You know, you rather let yourself down than God. Because when you let God down, what happens? Then many who were first will become last and those who were, so many who were last will become first and those who were first will become last. You know when people get saved first time, how, how they behave? Totally different. How's their mindset? Different. How they think? Different. When you first got saved, how were you? Passionate about God. But what happens over the time? Every care and deceitfulness of the world begins to work on you to make sure you are not faithful to God. You know why? He realized one day you will come before the Lord and knock on the door. Jesus will say, I never knew you. People will be saying, Lord, Lord, I never knew you. How come he never knew you? Because our intention and motive for what we are doing is not right. What is your intention for what you are doing? Let me say this. God wants to raise you up, but you have to believe in the word of God. I want to just remind you of something. Is that Jesus wants you to understand that we as children of God have to understand that we have to be connected with the Lord. That means repentance means I'm going to change my mind. How many of you are there? How many of you know I'm going to change my mind? So we cannot allow Satan to get involved in our minds and deceive us. Many people have allowed the wrong voice to speak to them. Now what's Jesus in Mark 6, 1 to 6? This is what Jesus said. Jesus went away and he came to his own town, and hometown Nazareth, and his disciples followed him. So what was Jesus doing? He was only teaching and preaching. And so in Jesus, when he came to his own town, he disciples followed him. And, the Sabbath, and on the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many who listened to him were utterly astonished, saying, where did this man acquire all this? What is the wisdom, the broadful intelligence which has been given to him? What mighty works and exhibitions of power are wrought by his hands? So the people knew something. He said, Jesus, wherever you are, there are mighty works of power. Wherever you are, there are supernatural miracles happening. So they were astonished and impressed, but they were skeptical and judgmental men. How many of you know of a congregation like this? Lucky not in this church. You know why? You will lose out on what God has for you. Listen, he was moving in the power. He was moving in the glory of the Father. He was manifesting the kingdom. He was doing all of these things. But on the Sabbath, he began to teach. And they were utterly astonished. And then they're asking, where did he get all this? And what was the wisdom, the broad intelligence, uh, broad and full intelligence, which has been given to him? What mighty works and exhibitions of power are wrought by his hands? Come on. When you see mighty works and exhibitions of power that Jesus is doing, how should we think? Watch this. They were astonished, but this is what they did. They said, is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James, Joseph, and Judas, and Simeon? Are not his sisters here amongst us? And they took offense at him. They were hurt that, that, this, that, hurt that this, they disapproved of him. And it hindered them from acknowledging his authority. And they were caused to stumble and fall. Who fell? They were caused to stumble and fall. It hindered them. Who do you think? You think I'm preaching because I want you not to criticize and judge? No, no. Whatever you want to do is for your bank account. Think about what I'm saying. It's for your bank account, not for mine. 
Those who are walking with God is different. So what am I saying? Is that they said, is it not the carpenter? Is it not this one, that one? They undermined his authority. What did they do? They took offense at him. They just said, hey, great exhibitions of power is happening here. Yeah? And what did they do? They said, listen, they took offense, they were hurt and disapproved of him. I mean, God, people disapprove of God. Can, can, can we think about this church? Imagine people go to church to disapprove of God. The church is full of, not this church, the church in the kingdom of God, the reason why people don't get their miracles is because they disapprove of God. Imagine people are going to church disapproving of God. How sad that is. God wants to move, we disapprove. Oh God, you can't move like this. You got to move like how I want you to move. Don't move like how you want to move. God, you must finish by this time. Hey God, you understand? If, hey, why is that pastor taking so long? Hey Amen. I'm not doing the service. The Holy Spirit coming in. What do you want to do? What are you going to do? Cut him off? I want to tell all people today that you put sand in your own food. You see these people in Nazareth? They are putting sand in their own food. They don't know it. But watch what he says. He said, listen, I know these are, they took offense. Just now there are great exhibitions of power. Mighty miracles are happening. Look at his teachings. He's not like anybody else. He's teaching something that is really supernatural and out of this world. He's not teaching like the scribes and Pharisees. He's building the foundation on the rock. And they are now, instead of building on the rock that the wind storm blow, they won't fall. What are they doing? They are talking about Jesus. There are too many people that go to church and talk about the church. There are too many people that go to church and talk about other people. Listen, you are not called to talk about other people. You must talk about Jesus. Let's talk about Jesus. Come on. Amen. Let's talk about Jesus. Why? He said, listen, they took offense at him. You know why you can't get your breakthrough? You took offense at what the Lord is doing. I'm telling you. He says, yeah, they took offense at him. They were hurt. You know, there are so many people say, I'm hurt and leave the church. I'll tell you something. I'll be very honest with you. When I, when I see they're hurt and they say, I'm hurt, I'm leaving the church. My friend, if you only want me to tell you the truth, you'll get shocked. You're not hurt. You're disobedient to what God is telling you. If I tell you the truth, but you are hurt, let me tell you something. You'll carry the hurt from this church to that church to that church to that church. You'll finish up in that place. Everybody will be hurt. Everybody will be hurt. Are you there, church? Everybody will be hurt. Why? When you carry hurt, you hurt everybody. If you carry hurt, you're going to hurt everybody else. But if you carry love, you're going to love everybody. That no matter who hurts you, you forgive them quickly and you love them because you understand, I'm a child of God. You see, the thinking must change. Don't say, because they hurt me, I'll hurt them back. Because they hurt you, you must love them back. You hear what I'm saying? Because for you to get to the next level, you've got to love them. I realize for the anointing to come on you, you've got to love them. Why? You see, there are too many people, they will leave because they're offended. But you know what they will do? They want other people to believe that, listen, because the church hurt me, I'm doing all this. Listen to me. Jesus never hurt you. And you destroy your own life. See why I'm preaching this? I'm helping you because that you don't get hurt. Leave your post and run and say, I'm hurt. Listen, you have to man up in the kingdom because the kingdom is a place of warfare. You may get few slaps. You may get whatever, whatever, whatever. You've got to turn the other cheek and say, I'm moving on. Come on, strong believers build on the rock. They don't build on what's happening to them. They build on what God has promised them. I'm not building on what's happening to me. You think pastors don't get hurt? I don't know how come. He made me so different. <laughs> I'm telling you. You know something? If, if, I'm now, as I said, 25 years now in ministry. 25, full-time ordained. And before that too, but 25. Hey, to be, in a, to be pastoring for 25 years, do you think it's an ABC? No, hey, I'm telling you it's ABC. <laughs> I had the best time of my life. I think they made one song to now. I had the time of my life. Do you know why? Because I learned to love people. So that even if they hurt me, you go through maybe one, two weeks of your challenge, but you come out quickly and then you have the time of your life. Because why? Serving God is everything that is in my bones. I don't care what happens. When you go through the storm, you go through the fire, you go through the hardship, you go through any... But because I'm serving God, I said this is the best job in the world. In fact, it's not a job, it's a calling. But you know something? 
This is the best thing in the world you could do. Preach the gospel. Pray for other people. See families change. Some people are supposed to die, they're not dying. This is what it is. How much joy it is. Doctor said you're going to die, we pray. Demon in you, we take it out. Come on. Jesus Christ, what better is job, to, then what better thing can you do than this? It's the most rewarding and satisfying thing to do in your life is to serve the Lord. That's why you can look past any problem, any challenge, any hurt. You're still on top. You know why? Because you're serving God. You know why? You'll always be successful. You're serving God. You know why you'll always have the victory? You're serving God. Why? Because no matter what happens, if you adopt this, this mindset that Lord, they disapproved of Him. Imagine people. They come to church. After a while, they disapprove of Jesus and what He's doing. What's wrong? I mean, this is not right in your mind because you start to disapprove what God is doing. Then I'm telling you something. The devil is going to attack you. He'll attack your family. But you don't know this. At that time when you're disapproving, you think, no, well, I need to give my approval. Then only the church must run. Come on, that's not the way to behave. How many people say, let me give my approval. Then the church must run. No. The church must run irrespective of the approval of the pastor, anybody, as long as Jesus approves it, it must be done. How many of you know what I'm saying? We are not called to approve Jesus. These people, this congregation that was in Nazareth, they want to approve Jesus. Jesus is not looking for approval. He is approved by the Father. And what the Father approves shall be accomplished in the name of Jesus. Whatever has been approved for your life today, I want to prophesy over you, is coming to pass because God approved it. Not man, not the church, not anybody else. But because God approved it for your life, I prophesy, you will be successful. I mean, if you know what I'm saying. You know what? If God approved your healing, you better get healed. If God approved your victory, you're going to be victorious. If God uh, approved your success, you're going to be successful. Whatever God approved in your life shall be manifested in the name of Jesus. When I connect to the word and I connect to what the Father has said to me, I'm telling you something. Man's approval, we're not looking for. We are looking for the approval of the Lord. Because man can approve you one day and the next day he cannot approve you. But when the Lord approves you, then I'm telling you something. You're going to accelerate and go into your purpose. Why? Because God wants you to acknowledge his authority and his authority is final. When he says you are approved, you are approved. When he says you are promoted, you are promoted. When he says you are favored, you are favored. I don't care what the devil says. I don't care what people People say all that matters is you win your place with God and you win the favor of God when you win the favor of God you'll win the favor of man that's why I came to tell somebody today acknowledge his authority you will never stumble and fall you know why they stumbled and fell they didn't acknowledge his authority let's go on to the next verse and Jesus said to them a prophet is not without honor, without honor. deference Reverence, except in his own country, among his own relatives, and in his own house. You see, church, you have to understand something. Look at the next verse. It says, he was not able to do even one work of power there, except he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. How come? The man with great exhibitions of power couldn't work any miracle in that town because the people did not want to believe. That means they had the opportunity to walk in faith, but they didn't walk in faith. They walked in unbelief. They walked in criticism, and they were judgmental, and this is how they were. So what happened? You know what? Many people I know took themselves out of the plan of God. They never fulfilled the mandate. Why? He's saying, you're going to stumble and fall when you're offended, and you, are dis you, 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 you want to criticize Jesus. Watch what he's saying. So what happened? This is saying there's an absence of honor. When you don't honor God, it will show in your life. 20 years down the line, you'll be going around the mountain. It's going to show. Why? I'm called to honor God. I'm called to honor Him. You know, when I come into church, I'm coming here not because I want to honor myself and I want to draw attention to myself. I want to come here and fall prostrate before the Lord. I want to honor God. See, the wrong mindset is, let me go to church to see what is happening, talk to this person, then you're getting a little bit of wings and whatever, whatever, and then you're doing all funny things. Let me tell you something, if you don't come to this church to honor God, you miss the mark. 
Why am I here? I want to honor God. I am living only for one thing. I don't care. And I'm going to tell you honestly, I don't care nothing about myself. Everything I want for myself, I have accomplished it. I'm only here to honor God. Everything that I need, I, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to worry about anything more. It's finished. I'm preparing for heaven. And I'm preparing the church for the coming of the Messiah. That what am I going to do? My entire life will be to honor God. I'm not looking for nothing. I don't even pray for money or anything. Like that. Take it from me. For me. I'll pray for you, but not for me. You know why? I don't need to worry about all that. That's his problem, to meet my needs. But what am I here for? I'm only here to honor God. Because you know what? You're going to realize something. How you honor God determines how the anointing flow to you. He says here, yeah, he could not do any work because of unbelief. He could not perform any miracles. He was not able. Imagine, Jesus was not able. Not based on, on his power being less, based on the people's response to him. You know why? If you don't honor the anointing in this house, you can't enjoy it. You have to understand, when you are in this house, you are here, you are rooted, honor the anointing of the house. Because it's not me doing the miracles, it's Jesus. If you ever think about something, he's the same Jesus doing a miracle here today from Nazareth. He's the same God. He's sitting on the throne. He's the same one. So he shows us. Imagine, he says, he was not able, my God, to do even one work of power there. You know what he's saying? You come in with faith and make the withdrawal from the Father. So imagine if you come in this church with the wrong mindset. How are you going to be deceived in your life? You're going to ask me, Pastor, why all these things are going wrong? Let me tell you something. It's because you don't honor the glory and anointing in the house. Why am I here? I want to honor Jesus. I don't care to be in a job. Listen, I only care to be in a place honoring Jesus. If this was just a job, I would just walk away tomorrow. Hear what I'm saying, church. Because jobs you change, but callings you can't change. The only time I can leave this place is when the Holy Spirit tells me now, go somewhere else. But I can't go for a better offer. I just explained that. When a church in Phoenix came up, the region phoned me. Another was with me that day. And he asked me, do you want to go to another church? I said, man, if you tell me to go, I can't go. You know why? Only when God tell me, I'll go. Because I'm not looking for a better offer or a bigger building. Yet I need a bigger building, but I'm not looking for that. I'm looking for the will of God. So don't tell me to do anything. I mean, you can put millions of rands in front of me. Somebody came to me and said, Pastor, we give you this amount of money. Uh, we're going to build a church for you, and we want you to do this. I said, you know, thank you. I never heard God keep your 10 million. You think, th you think this is a joke? I am here to honor God. You must be here to honor God. Whether you got one cent or you got no sense, you got nothing, but have some common sense, and I'm telling you something. <laughs> honor God with your life. Church, I'm telling you, we have to honor God. If God says Palm View, Palm View is a place, the whole world will come to Palm View. You know why? Because we're honoring God. People are flying from Australia. They're coming back in December. People are flying from Johannesburg, all over the country, coming to the church. People actually... They're, phony, they're coming from hours away for, for the next service. All over the country they're coming. But you know why? Why? It's because there's nothing here but Jesus Christ. And as long as he's here, he says this one thing. Church, that's why we have to honor God. If Christ be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. You see, if man get lifted up, no one can be drawn. But if the man's heart is right and say, Christ be lifted up, then all men from all nations are coming. Why? It's not about us. It will never be about us. Never be about our achievements. Because when you die, you're going to realize something. The only thing that you are going to take and go with you is what you have done for the Lord. Once this in closing... He couldn't lay hands and says a few sick people, he cured them. Don't stop the healing anointing from flowing to you. 
Don't stop the financial anointing from flowing to you. Don't stop the miraculous anointing from flowing. Don't stop your own destiny. Don't disqualify yourself and become last when God wants you first in line. Don't cause yourself to walk away from the truth and embrace the lie and live in the lie. We have to embrace the truth because here you find he laid his hands on a few sick people and he cured them. A few. Those who had the faith to believe. If you ask me, people are coming from all over. They come for one service to get miraculously healed and gone. You ask me, what happened? We are here so long, Lord. Have to check our hearts. You say, Lord, listen, I'm not saying that all the time, but sometimes I get shocked myself. I say, Lord, if our hearts are right, the miracles can happen. If we honor the anointing and honor Jesus, the miracles can happen. He's telling you, look at the scripture. Jesus couldn't do one work. But when the people align themselves to Jesus and his word and teachings, he could do many works. And he marveled, and let me see, he told him what the problem is in closing. He marveled because of the unbelief, the lack of faith in him, and he went among surrounding villages and continued teaching. Why was he teaching like this? He was not teaching like this to hinder people or to hurt people. He was teaching like this because why? He wanted them to have faith in God. He wanted them to know that, listen, we have to have faith in the word. We have to have faith in what Jesus promised us. We, he went about and he continued teaching why. He realized if I don't change their minds, I can never change their faith. Why? Because faith cometh by hearing the word of God. So to change your mind, I must change my thinking. I must change my level of faith. I must hear more of the word. So when you receive the word, I'm telling you something. This is very important. If you receive the word, you believe the Lord, you honor the anointing. In the next service by Tuesday night, let me tell you, the anointing that is in this house will flow to you just like that. You will just receive it just like that. Why? Because now I'm aligning myself to Jesus. That's when he can do many works in your life, in your family, in your home. Many things can happen in your life. Why? Because now I've aligned myself to the word of God and Jesus. Now, the anointing or the spirit of the Lord that was upon him can come upon you in another dimension. The ultimate is, I'm going to receive from Jesus. I seal you with the blood and now may the grace of God, the love of our Lord Jesus Christ and the sweet fellowship of the blessed Holy Spirit strive and abide on each and every one of us. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Goodbye and the Lord bless you. Amen.